Good morning, it's Michelle at Tesket Emporium here today and we are going to be working on a tutorial today for a new face covering, face mask, we're not going to call it that because it's officially designated as PPE used in um, hospitals and stuff. But it's a face covering or a fabric mask. This one I've developed especially for people with beards. Now, if you've got a very short, close-cut beard, I think you'll be okay with a normal mask. But the ones, people with a longer beard, what happens is the mask pushes the beard against the neck and the throat. <clears throat> when you look down, it rides up and pushes it into your eyes. So it's not ideal for somebody with a lot of hair and a beard. So what I did was I've redeveloped a pattern to create a beard version so this is the pattern you can download it in the tutorial on the facebook group as well headbands for heroes uk and it's in the file section print it off make sure when you print it off you print it to 100 percent scale or to actual size and when you've done your print before you do any cutting the first thing you do is you measure to make sure that that is five centimeters and that is five centimeters and the reason you check both is so that if it's elongated your pattern either direction it will be skewed and won't fit correctly so that makes sure five by five over there then you cut it out and you're ready to go so you've got two options depending on how much fabric you've got you can cut two pieces out in mirror back to back or folded sides together whichever or you can cut one piece on the fold so that's your option there so I've put that in there if you're cutting it on the fold a portion only of the pattern gets placed on the fold this section up here being rounded will not be on the fold because you're going to cut that there that's the top of your mask or the nose section this is the beard section and this is where the ear elastics go in this case it doesn't have ear elastic it has overhead elastic but there's your pattern and you're ready to go so i've cut one out in um, <coughs> cardboard excuse me and i've started cutting so i wanted to demonstrate to you that if you're cutting it on the fold it's as simple as folding your fabric over wasting as little as possible because that's one of the big things we want to have it as sustainable as we can and then I've placed it along the fold line over here of my fabric and I've cut around it. You can see I've cut from the curve all the way around. Now you will need two pieces. You cut one of your outer fab fabric, your public fabric, and one is your private side or the inside, the lining. So that's the one piece there. Now, to save as much fabric as you can, you've got the option of cutting it on the fold like this one or not on the fold so if i wanted to squeeze another one in here and i had a little bit more and i could twist it round that way again that would be helpful however in this instance i don't have enough for another piece over here so i'm just going to cut this one on the fold but if i wasn't cutting it on the fold the only thing to remember is you're going to stitch along this edge here in addition to everything else I'm going to show you because when you've got it on a fold you don't need to stitch there you're only stitching that top curved section so for this you need to add in a one centimeter seam allowance just on this edge and then you can just grade it inwards or curve it inwards to match up your pattern so that's what you would do if you were doing it and it was not on the fold. Okay, I hope that's clear. The rest of the pattern is cut exactly the same. But for today, I am only going to be cutting it on the fold. So there it is. I'm going to flip it over purely because my one side of my, of my paper template is quite slippery. So I'm going to use that to cut it out. So it's on the fold. This is the chin section over here. This is the ear section. And this is now coming up towards the nose. 
move that out of the way so we don't snip it and then i'm cutting just this rounded piece okay so i've now got two sorry the my cutting sitting like this is much more difficult that i will tidy that up because it needs to be the same size as the actual black so now i've got two linings and i have also got three outers so i will cut another lining for that just now but for demo i'm going to use these two pieces so this black is a bit creased so i will go off and i will give that a press before i do anything else and then when i'm done i will come back to the sewing machine and we'll begin stitching the beard face covering together see you in a minute Hi, we're back again and I've now pressed my two pieces. I've got my lining and I've got my outer or my public piece. So the first thing we're going to do is put it back as if you've just cut it out. That's my folded edge there and that's my curved nose edge. We're now going to sew a seam across here and we're just going to graduate the seam from one centimeter down to nothing just where the fold starts. So let me show you that. In the beginning, it's probably easier to start off at the top of the nose over here and go downwards, just so that you get the angle right for as you graduate your seam smaller. So my stitch length is quite small, straight stitch on just under two. And that's because I want a nice dense stitch to allow the mask to be as protective as possible. So there I'm going closer and closer and then I just go off the edge and reverse. So basically you're making, if you've ever done a dart, you're making a curved dart. That's what it is. Snip off your threads as you go. So that's what you've now landed up with is a one centimeter -ish seam here or the width of your foot presser foot all the way down to nothing over here and then it's reversed backward and forward just to anchor it in place repeat that with your black fabric or your outer in this case now i'm going to use white thread today to make it easier generally i would make the black masks on the machine with the black thread but the white is just a little easier for you to see and also sometimes it is actually really nice with a contrasting thread so there you go we've now stitched the two nose seams so that one is now you can see as well graduated down from one centimeter over this end all the way down to nothing on that end. So you've now got two pieces with the nose seams done. So we now take our scissors and we're going to just clip along this curved edge here. Clip, that means to cut your fabric, but only up to the stitches. You do not go past the stitches, otherwise you'll have to re-sew your seam. Now you can do little Vs in here, but quite frankly, it isn't necessary. I haven't found it to be necessary. So I'm just going to put three or four little snips along that edge. So you can see now I've clipped that curved edge. The next part, I finger press. If you have a tiny little iron or something and you like to iron these things, you are, of course, able to do that as well. So take it and I finger press it or nail press it flat. I put both my seams in this orientation, so with the right side towards me and the wrong side away from me, and I flatten them to this, what is my right hand side. But if I'm looking at it, the seam would be to my left. So I do the same thing again with my outer fabric take my outer fabric and just finger press that flat so you're going to have a nice flat seam fold this one out so you now have the right side showing outwards and you marry the two pieces together at that seam 
So I'm going to butt my two seams together over here, my black and my green. You can see the black's a bit more difficult to see, but there. Now, because of pressing the seams in the opposite directions, they will nestle together really well. Now you pin that seam, you pin halfway between the ear section and the middle of the nose or the bridge of the nose as well. And then you go to the opposite side and you pin. Remember, these are all right sides together, guys. Pin it along here. Let me turn it so you can see it a little better. So from the bridge, I've put a pin there, put a pin in the middle, and now I'm putting a pin on this end. I've missed one step out, which I will show you um, a little later for a normal mask. It doesn't; ne it's not necessary on this particular mask, but on the other one, it's a really good way of making sure your inner fabric doesn't stick out. Okay, so now we're going along the bottom of the mask, around the base where the beard is. So we pin from the middle, lie that flat if you can, get the two pieces nicely on top of each other, and then just pin around the edges. So you can see we are just going all the way from the middle out in one direction and then out in the other direction as well, matching up all the curved seams and getting back to the earpiece over here. So I've done the one side, I'm going to repeat that on this side, going around the curve and over to this side here. So I've now got it all pinned on the rounded bottom edge here and along the top edge where the nose is. I want to leave one of my ears sides open. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to do that on the right hand side. So I'm going to close up this left hand side and I'm going to go to this side over here. And I'm going to fold my lining over one centimeter ish. I'm going to do that three times one, two, three. Now, what that does is it saves you having to actually do a seam or a hem on that open edge. And that'll be clearer to you just now why that's a quick and easier way of doing it. So that's what I've done. You can now see my main fabric is longer than my short lining because I've rolled it over three times. So I've now got about, I would say at least an inch, what's that, two and a half, three centimeters of my main fabric sticking out. I'm now going to take it over to the machine and I'm going to stitch all the way around the mask, starting well, you can start anywhere as long as you end because you're going to do a full circuit of your garment anyway. So I'm starting at the top edge on the side of the brow of the nose bridge. So I'm starting there and working my way towards the ear. Loop, turn, go straight down the one side where the elastic will eventually go and turn pivot remember with your needle down into the fabric and then I'm going down towards the beard now all the way around use a one centimeter ish seam allowance or in my case I just use the edge of my presser foot as a guide to the width of my seam Remember, the bigger your seam allowance is, the smaller your mask is going to be. So if you're making this for a smaller person, then you can make the seam allowance a little bit bigger. Right, I'm coming up to the other ear piece 
now where the mask elastic is going to go through. And what I'm doing is I'm going straight over that folded seam I created earlier. And as soon as I'm on top of that seam, I pause and I tuck under my main fabric over here by about four millimeters. I want to tuck it under so that it neatens that edge up for me. And I sew straight towards the edge and I sew about a millimeter or so away from the edge. And then I come back, turn around, pivot at the corner and repeat the other side. Now I'm at the top of the mask again but on the right side of the bridge of the nose now. And I'm coming up to the bridge of the nose and I continue over that, keeping my seams flat. And I simply go over the end of my stitches where I started. So I'm overlapping my stitches to give it a little bit more strength. Slip off your seams. So there we have all the stitching done. So I started here, I went all the way around. Okay, you're closing in this edge. I then went all the way around the bottom of my beard part. And then when I came here, I went over my seam to keep that nice and flat. Now what I normally do is just finger or nail press that seam down so it's nice and neat. When I get to this edge here, I fold it under about a millimeter or two, and then I sew that flat, so it's created a nice seam there, that's a hem that's nice and neat, and I turn and I make my way back up to the bridge of the nose, and I overlap my seam over there. So you have now done stitching your mask together. You now need your clips again, because remember on any edges of fabric where your seams are curved, you want to create an ease in that seam to allow it to bend. So I'm going to clip a little bit along this edge here, maybe three or four clips along the nose bridge. That's enough there. And the biggest curve we've got on this particular mask is here where the beard goes. So we are going to clip that curved edge there. This is a concave. We're going to clip that. And we're also going to clip this convex area over here at the bottom and do that on both sides. So you just want to do it where it's curved. And because I'm not notching it, in other words, I'm not cu cutting out a little V, just for speed, I am actually going to put my little snips a little closer together, about a centimeter apart than I would normally. I can leave the bottom of the mask because that's actually flat. I don't need to clip that. And I pick up the clipping on the other side of the beard section until I have clipped all the way around the curved section here. Once I'm happy I've clipped it, I then go to the sewn side, the sewn together side of the ears where the elastic goes, and I clip off the corners. And of course we do that so that our fabric folds nicely and we get a decent point in the corner. So that's all the snipping done and you are now ready to turn your mask inside out. So that you've got this hole you created by not closing in that seam. Put your hand in there. I get my thumbs in to the corners like that. And I push my fingernail into the corners, into the points. And then I push them out. And you always get a reasonably nice turned corner. But if it isn't good enough, get yourself something like this. This is a bone tool. And it's good for marking and all sorts, but it's also great as a device for pushing out your points. And I just gently push the points out. If you're using scissors, you have to be super careful. Preferably use scissors that don't have a very sharp point. Now, grab that, pull it all the way through. 
and flatten out your mask. At this point, if you're not making many, you can go and iron it. But really, it doesn't need an iron if you've ironed it to start with and you haven't manhandled it too much. So here we are. We now have the lining completely encasing all the seams and we have the outer or the public part. Now the next stage is to do the top stitching and to create a wire channel for the nose wire. So let's pop our pins back on here. So I start off at the bridge of the nose and I make sure my seams are pulled apart nicely and flat. So I put my finger underneath that bridge of the nose and I put a pin in there. I then move down the mask to the opposite side of the nose and I put another pin in there. And I do that. Let's see what the measurement is because I don't ever measure this, by the way. I just sort of give it a general. That looks about three inches, which is probably about 10 or 10 centimeters or so. Yeah, I would say it's about 10 centimeters. So I put my one pin in there, 10 centimeters. And I then go to the opposite side of the bridge of the nose and I put another pin in there also at about 10 centimeters. Now, the reason I do the pins opposite like this is so I can sew straight across here and this pin isn't going to be in the way, but it's keeping my seams inside the mask flat. This is to indicate the end of my wire, nose wire channel, and that's to indicate the beginning of my nose wire. All right. And then, then we are going to pin all the way around the perimeter of the mask, including around the beard, because bear, remember, we want to get those seams nice and flat and make sure we've flattened and pulled all the seams out, else you won't have a nice rounded shape. Just the other thing is, you know, licking my fingers and rolling my seams is something that I tend to do as well. That helps. Or if you're doing a lot, you can dip your fingers into water. And it helps you roll the fabric so that the seams lie nice and flat. But just go all the way around, pinning as you go. Easy side is the side that you closed in and you push the points out. I want you to flip that round and fold in. A section of this about one centimeter and that's going to be where your nose um, sorry your not your nose wire that is going to be where your elastic is going to go and you put a pin in there to mark where the edge of your seam is over here so that you can sew over it all in one movement now for the other side which is where your wire is going to go and you've got this opening where you made you fold it over the lining. So what I do is I press with my finger along that. To con it's a continuation of the seam, really. You can see the stitching there. I flatten that side. Then I flatten the other side with my nail. I then fold that over so that it then touches the lining of my mask. And I repeat, I put a pin in just so I know where I'm going to stitch. This side is much more important than the other side to get your stitch, your pin in the right place. Because look here, when you fold it over, what you do not want to do is to stitch over this. See, I've pinned it. I want you to make sure that when you pin it, you pin it so that you do not catch the casing underneath the lining it needs to be loose so that's why you're putting a pin there where you know it's not going to catch so I've showed you a video of this in the past how I do my wire and all in one movement so I can do that again for you today but basically we are going to start on the side of the mask over here where the closed end is and we're going to go all the way around and we're going to come back to where we started. We're then going to pivot and go down a centimetre and we're going to go back that way, creating a channel for the nose wire. 
Now that is easier for me to show you than to explain it to you. So I'm just going to make a start. Right, don't forget to stop. Don't do what I've just done and go too far. Else your elastic won't get through the channel. Now this is top stitching, so you want to be reasonably close to the edge and pivot as you go and then sew around the base of your beard section. What this does is it stops all of the movement of the two layers keeps the two layers neatly together so you don't have to worry about that it irons much better as well so now I'm coming up to the curve and to the ear and I'm going to make sure my flap is folded under and I'm going to stop where I've indicated with my pin my seam needs to go Turn and I'm back at the top of the, I shouldn't have taken that pin out, that's my marker. And that's why you leave the three top pins in. Unlike all of the others, they can come out. I'm going to just snip off the thread from the beginning of my work. Because I'm going to run straight over the top of it to reinforce those stitches. You can, of course, go backward and forward, but in my case, I prefer to just reinforce it by going over the top of it. I pivot 90 degrees, and I stitch six on my machine is about right, and I go back and forward twice. I then pivot, and I'm going to go back in the same direction that I've just come from. And I'm going to stitch centimeter or thereabouts away from my first line of stitches that's important it's not your first it's not the edge of your seam or the edge of your garment it's the edge of your first seam otherwise your wire won't fit in and then to finish off I reverse and I anchor it off so you've now left that channel open so snip your seams, your threads. Having difficulty with my words today, and that might have something to do with a total lack of sleep. Right, so let me show you what we've done. We started over here at the top, and we went all the way around, and we closed in the seam here, which is now going to make the elastic channel. We went around the base of the beard section, and we came up towards the opposite side and the opposite ear and we folded that in but without catching that pocket because that's where your filter could go in and also your nose wire and then we came back across here at the top and that overlapped my first stitches I then pivoted 90 degrees went down a centimeter and I did that twice to reinforce the end so the wire doesn't poke through and then I came back a centimeter away from my original stitching and I ended it off by reversing a couple of times over here. I now have an open end for putting the wire in and out in case for washing and then I've got a sealed end here as well. And that is how you do it all in one. So the basic mask is now completed and you're ready to put your elastic in. I'm going to demonstrate with a piece of white elastic for you because that can be seen a little bit easier. And I will find the end at some point. Right, we need a longish piece of elastic and I am saying it needs to be about two feet. What's that? Let me have a look. Let's have a look. I would say 75 centimeters or there about. Okay, so it's quite a big piece of elastic for this mask. And I'll explain why in a second. So what we're doing is we're taking the one end of our elastic and we're threading it through the channel. So what we want is to go up towards the top of the 
mask and pull it down towards the beard part of the mask. Okay, so my tail is on the beard section of the mask. Then take it over the top and I repeat that on the other side, pulling it through from the top down to the beard section. So we now have a loop at the top of our beard, our beard mask. Okay, you can have a look on the, on the public side. We've got a loop. That loop of elastic is going to go around the back of the head. The tails of the elastic, you're just going to put into a loose knot because that makes it adjustable for whoever has bought it or you're gifting it to. So you now have a knot at the bottom by the beard and you've got a closed loop at the top. Wire, we use pipe cleaners. I've got shorter ones, so they are ideal for this because all I'm going to do is roll the top over with my little round pliers. And the reason we do that is because the sharp edges are much more likely to get pushed through your fabric over time especially and this will prevent that from happening so all we're going to do is slide it through here Let's see if I can do it backwards this way into the channel and then we push it gently as if you're threading elastic until it butts up against the end and then we are done and there you have it you now have a mask for somebody with a beard. But it's not just for somebody with a beard, guys. This, I um, think, is going to be really helpful for people who have asthma or have trouble with maybe claustrophobia, I would imagine. Because what you can do is, I'm going to just undo my knot to show you how it works. So you put it over your head, the elastic. The top elastic goes over your ear. The bottom elastic then gets pulled to tighten it. Okay? And gets pulled and tied around the base of the neck. I'm going to put a bow there because you then adjust your nose wire. If you've got glasses, it fits under your glasses. And now you can see, if you've got a beard, you can push here and it's not moving along the top of my nose. And the reason for that is the way we've put the elastic over the top of our ears first and then under and to the nape of the neck. And that keeps this bandana style away from, um, stops it from riding up. Also, it may help because you've got a bit more, I don't know, freedom at the bottom here. It's not so enclosed like the other one. Perhaps that will help people who've got a problem with asthma or claustrophobia or anything like that. And as my son-in-law says, you know, he pulls it off by the ears. Always pull it off by the elastics. And he wears it around his neck when it's not necessary. And it actually looks like a bandana. So there you go. That's the tutorial for making, if I can get it over my ear, the bandana style beard face covering. So sorry about the bright sunlight, which has just decided to come out. Have a fabulous day, everybody. Hmm, this hair as well, a little bit uh, vult, wild. So have a wonderful day. And um, make some of these for people that you know that maybe have beards or that have asthma. Try them out. Everybody likes a different mask, so have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.